So I passed out from a tier three college where good product based companies didn't used to come. As a result, I got into a service based company at the very start of my career. I started my career with a company called Epam Systems, where I spent an year or more than a year, and then I finally got an opportunity for Amazon. I cracked the interview and landed up an SD one role at Amazon Hyderabad. Now many of you have been following me for quite some time. Ask me in comments that how did I ended up getting a job at Amazon? How did I get call? How did I you know prepare for the interviews since I started from a tier three college and also in work in a service based company for a year. So in this very video, I am going to share all those things. So stick with me till the very end, and I am very sure you are going to learn a lot through this. So without any further ado, let's get started with my video. Okay, so the first challenge for working in a service based company is your growth curve is actually very slow. Now I'm not saying it's true for all the cases, but generally speaking, or at least based on my experience, the growth curve that you have in a service based company is actually slower than what you would get in a product based company. Now what do I mean by that? So now let's say you spend one year at a, in a product based company called Amazon versus you spend one year in a service based company, let's say Wipro or TCS. So you, you would end up or you would have more responsibilities in a company like Amazon within that one year than you. would have in a service based company so the same happened with me as a result when i was one year experience i didn't have good projects to showcase for and in amazon or any good product based company right you will have a project round where you have to talk about the projects and the challenges that you have faced so i had to ensure that i had good projects under my kitty so now i would talk about what did i do to overcome those challenges but first things first how did i get a call from amazon so i had applied to amazon multiple times right uh, i didn't get any calls at all and especially back in 2020 it was the covid situation so they had gone into hiring freeze but luckily i got a call directly from the recruiter it could have been from my linkedin profile it could have been from nokri it could have been from instar or all the places where i was or maybe i had also applied to amazon directly sometimes via referral sometimes not via referral as well on amazon's career portal page so i'm exactly not sure how i got the call because the recruiter directly reached out to me with an ots link but having said that i would highly recommend you to use all these places to apply to not only just amazon but all your dream tech companies now once i got the call obviously i had to prepare dsa so i was already preparing dsa for quite some time so when i was in my service based company at that time i had to go to office right so my schedule used to look like this in the morning i would wake up at 7 do the household chores because i was staying alone and then i used to make sure that i end up solving at least two or three dsa problems before going to office because once you go to office you come back home there is not much energy left for you to do so i ensured that i at least solve two three dsa problems a day to ensure consistency and then there are other things that how do you revise dsa problems what are the important topics you should know i have or that i have already discussed in a lot of other separate videos i will attach the link to it in description down below so after watching this video if you are interested you can go and check out those videos now coming to the projects part where i faced the most challenge because dsa anyway you would end up doing there a lot of courses resources youtube channels everything i've there to learn dsa but the main part is that how do you prepare for the project rounds because most of these companies ask you project rounds and sometimes it goes in depth so the first thing that i did was i focused a little bit on the personal projects and i short selected two or three good personal projects which i had developed and something which i can use my time to discuss okay so i had built one train reservation system project where i basically you built a backend system basically it is a full stack project but mostly i focused on the backend part which i developed using java spring boot i used hibernate i used spring aop to send email notifications whenever a new train was booked i also handled the race condition where i ensured that no one single seat can be used or booked by multiple users at the same time if they are trying to book this particular seat concurrently also i used a chatting application using java socket programming which i also included in my cv and i remember having some in depth conversations around that application when i was giving my bar raiser round he took a keen interest in that and he asked me a lot of questions around the same so one point over here is whatever project you are developing make sure that you revise the projects because when i was interviewing it was almost 2 years when i had developed the chatting application so i actually ensured that i went to the code base understood the challenges that i had went through how did i came up and solve those challenges because all these things all these questions are going to be asked up by your interviewer and you have to be in that zone you have to remember the context and you also have to remember the project as well so make sure that you revise the projects before you actually go and settle interview second is since i didn't have good exposure in the main primary project that i had i took up an internal project internal projects is something which you will get in the company and for that you have to spend some extra time developing it these are the projects which are not in priority and hence they won't be assigned to senior developers most of the time so they are usually given 
talking to people in bench or with people like junior developers who are willing to spend some extra time on it so yeah it would get hectic because i remember i had to stay in office till 4 am in the morning for some days to complete this projects and it had a very strict deadline but since we were building we were a small group of people building this project from scratch we ended up learning a lot of things and this is something again i could discuss with my interviewers and that kind of gave me an edge however however there was a round that is the hiring manager round where they were obviously content with my personal projects or the internal projects that i had done but at the same time they were interested to know that what are the project what is my main project and what i'm exactly working on in my current company you can't really shy away from it though you can do some damage control by doing personal projects or most of the time they would end up asking the main primary project now, if you don't have exposure to that particular project or you haven't implemented or got a chance to implement a lot of projects on your own or a lot of features of that particular project on your own what you can do is for something which i did is go and understand the code base as much as you can go to the documentations read the architectures of the projects and try to understand that why this particular thing is designed in a certain way if you don't understand yourself reach out to a senior developers have some discussions with them right try to understand standard what are the some of the challenging aspects that they have worked on and how what are the problems that they face and how did they overcome them because having these conversations which actually help you to come up with appropriate answers whenever you are giving an interview and your interviewer will be grilling you so my two cents on this would be to go to the documentation project documentation understand the architectures even if you're not getting a chance to implement yourself as a junior in these type of companies and also discuss with your senior developers normally these project rounds have very typical questions i've seen this format being followed in all the product tech companies like a very typical question would be what are the challenges that you faced and uh, how did you overcome them right or a lot of other behavioral questions as well associated with it how what are the tech stacks that you used uh, why did you choose this particular tech stack right all of these things so never tell them ki i chose this particular tech stack because i was comfortable with it no your answer should be more pertinent to the use case that you were solving because they don't really care what tech stacks you should know and they care that if the use case demands you to use a particular tech stack you would learn and you would implement it now let's say if you don't have a development project then obviously you are left with just internal project as well as your personal projects and you can tell to the interviewer that hey i'm not in a development project and i'm very sure he would take that into account as a sd1 what he really cares is your will to learn and also having your basics correct if you're an sd2 then obviously you would need some sort of experience to showcase for so for that you can take some side projects as well so in my case it was a development project though i didn't get much exposure at all but still i was able to circumvent my way and at that time we used to go to office so i had a rapport with my senior engineer senior developers we used to share good bond and hence we used to have this conversations as well the serendipity was there uh, which is something you won't get working from home so that's a challenge you understand but, but feel free to understand these things go to the documentation because that's something that really helps so three things i did now let me sum it up one is you know understanding your main project second is doing some side projects like doing some internal projects right which happened in my case and the third was to focus on your personal projects and also in ensuring that you revise your projects before you go and with the application part feel free to apply in whatever avenues you feel like something which works and work for me is insta hire knockery directly applying to the job portals and sometimes also taking referrals right now referrals is not going to ensure interview calls if you and if you're not getting the referrals feel free to go and apply directly also make sure if you have a good resume whatever work you have done you have showcased it if you want to check out my resume which got me calls on a lot of companies you can feel free to go and check out my resume video i will attach the link to it in the description down below i hope this answers most of your questions regarding what i did to get into amazon or a rack based company after starting off with a service based comp and not getting much exposure on the project side of things if you have any questions feel free to comment out below and i would be more than happy to resolve it for you if you like this content please please press the like button and subscribe to my channel because this motivates me a lot to make such videos and you can also let me know some other content ideas on which you want me to make a video on and i would be more than happy to do the research and come up with my experience or on those particular topic i would be daddy over here i hope this video was insightful i wish all the best for your future goodbye and stay safe